بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين well, a, very, a very good evening to all of you first of all and uh, i feel some some of these introductions are setups <laughs> how can you live up to all these good things that she's been saying i mean i'm like i'm looking and saying ya allah help me because a lot of these you see that's part of our heritage and culture i think all of us we have so much, we're so focused on virtuous biographies we look virtues based biographies rather than academic biographies and neutral biographies so when we like somebody we look for all the virtues there are in the world and if we don't find some we'll make some ah <laughs> alhamdulillah <sighs> So how are you all doing this evening? <coughs> what is today? Monday. Monday is a good day. It's all right. Alhamdulillah. One of the most difficult topics, maybe, and at the same time, it's sort of the easy, difficult, difficult, easy. The big thing and the missing thing. The biggest thing and the missing thing is the issue of the love, of love in general. A lot of people, a lot of us, so I don't take this on a third party, a lot of us converted our faith into a prophetic sales pitch. The prophetic sales pitch entails that the Prophet Muhammad bin Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa ashabi wa azwajihi wa sallam came 1450 some years ago and gave us a sales pitch believe in what I have to say and you'll avoid hell how about that deal and we sort of reduced this faith this beautiful faith that connects you to the creator of all to a set of what I call theoretical tenets or orthodoxy rather than orthopraxy. So it doesn't matter whether your heart is in conformity with what you believe, so long you believe. So long you, not, you believe meaning what? You say this set of theory is true. Okay? Done. And therefore we tend to say something and then do something else. We know that smiling is sunnah, but we don't. We know that loving is actually obligation, an obligation. And I, then you say, what do you mean love is an obligation? How can you oblige people to love? Well, it's sort of telling you that if you don't love, your faith is incomplete. But yet we still, we're very stingy when it comes to love. As if there's a shortage of love out there. So we've got these misconceptions and I think this is our reductionist attitude to our faith. We, we, we've adopted a very reductionist attitude to faith. So we've turned faith into, it's like I always say, a set of do's, a set of don'ts. And sometimes into just, sometimes even worse than that, into a sort of a cult mentality. Where we, it's self-righteousness, superiority in the name of orthodoxy, not orthopraxy. Whoa. Among the questions asked all the time, the question of love and among the questions that are missed all the time is the question of love somehow we miss it and then also it's sort of sought the most sought after and the reason for that is because you see we started raising our kids and even ourselves and our, our children in schools and our students in schools to fear God rather than to love God. We raise them on the point of fear rather than love. While Islam comes with the two wings, al khawf wa raja, hope and khawf. But I want to look at khawf, which we call fear, from a different perspective, from the perspective of shamefacedness, rather than a fear that means terrifying, scared. 
because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. And it's sort of like if on a creation level you have someone who you love very much and you know they've done everything for you, they've given you their, their everything. And some of your fathers or mothers, you know, have done that for you, if not most all or all of us. They've given everything. And you've disappointed them and you know you shouldn't have disappointed them. You have shamefacedness before them rather than fear of them. You know all they have is love for you, even when they're reacting, but it's coming out of such massive love for the disappointment that they've experienced with you, so you're shamefaced. So when we say that with, the, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on a diff, totally different level, it's that love, it's that hope, and that shamefacedness before him. Why do I shame, say shamefaced? Is because he subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously, is continuously, eternally, until now, and everlastingly, is overwhelming us, sh over showering us, enveloping us with his love and mercy. I always say, if you want, if I, if I can take you back to Adam and Iblis in just a little bit, I, you know. When Allah Ta'ala created Adam, He said in the Quran, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ Adam is two parts, it seems, from the Quran. Teen, which means soil, earth, soul, ruh, two. Okay. The soil part, Allah says, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ Once the soil part is complete, it may indicate that there you know, could be something before that's incomplete, but let's not talk about that some other time. But once the creation of Adam is complete from a soil element perspective entirely, then نَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ Then I've put in him, in this Adam, the ruh. And Allah Ta'ala attributes it to himself. Not that it is part of him, but it is so honored. It's just like saying Baytullah, the house of Allah. Not that the house houses Allah, but it is so honorable and sacred. It is Allah's. So here Allah tells you a ruh is his. Doesn't mean part because the creator is not divisible, nor is he non-divisible in a sense or indivisible. Neither apply to him because both are attributes of the creation. Then, once the ruh goes in Adam, becomes now part of Adam, فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ Commanding the malaika, that's when you prostrate to Adam. Honoring that soul. Honoring that ruh. Now, can you imagine how much Respect how much respect the Malaika gave to that Ruh of Adam by the command of Allah and based on how much love Allah graced that Ruh with. That's the Ruh that yours and mine are from, your father Adam. I know some of us may not know each other through our minds and bodies, but let me assure you, my beloved, that my, your soul and mine are very, very, very old friends. Any human, same father, same soul. That soul that was bathed, if you want to say, with Allah's love subhanahu wa ta'ala, honored so much, dignified so much, uh, showered with Allah's love, all it witnessed and all it was, a, it was, it capacitated is Allah's love so much that Allah Taala commanded the angels to prostrate to it, and that's why I always say that our souls always long for that kind of love, and in return Allah gives us that when He says, "Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna turji'i ila Rabbik," O oh, tranquil soul, how can a soul be tranquil? Money. We've seen lots of people with money where the soul is not really tranquil. They're still searching for more. They're not, they're not satisfied. Power. 
we've seen power hungry all the way from fair from pharaoh from pharaoh up until the end of days still not satisfied with the power they want more tranquility is not there what possessions what possessions the only thing that tranquils the soul is that love experiencing love that tra that that brings the soul to tranquility ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al-qulub allah tells us with the presence of Allah Ta'ala, that presence is a presence of love. That's when the hearts settle. And then what does he tell you? Obviously now from Adam all the way to after we pass away, Allah says, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna, O tranquil soul, irji'i ila rabbik. And notice the lafz in the Quran, the word is irji'i. Irji'i means what? Return. Come back. What do you mean come back? Well, this is the soul that he first gave you and created anyway in the first place. It's from him and it needs to return back to him. So therefore, you're going back home. You're pleased and you will be pleased. The only thing that pleases the soul, obviously, is the love, nothing else. Fadkhuli fi ibadi. Enter among my my worshippers and enter my Jannah. Wadkhuli Jannati. Al Jannah is for the people of Mahabba, not no, nobody else. No love, no Jannah, straightforward. No love, no deen. No love, no religion. No love, no faith. No love, nothing. No love, no life. That's why I always say our souls always he, have a longing to go back to love. We all do. We, we have such a longing, all of us. And people, some people think that it's just some people. We all do. Regardless who you are, you could be the worst criminal. You could be the worst kind of person. If you're touched by love, your soul has such a longing for it, it wants to go there. Even if your mind veils it. I always say it's, the soul is not the problem. It's the mind that plays tricks and veils things. But that's why when you hear, I always say, when you hear the word, I love you. If there is a minimum, a minimum degree of truthfulness in it, you're gone. Your soul longs for that, to experience that love that it experienced before you were born with Adam السلام, before it even joined the, the soil element of it. That Puritan love Allah graced that soul with and your soul also longs for the future when It longs for that and as if it is now out of its place in this dimension because out of its place because it's veiled by the veils of mind, and mind meaning, I, I'm not against mind obviously, but what I'm saying is mind, there's an epistemological limitation to the knowledge that mind has and what we know to be true today may be untrue tomorrow and, and we keep growing and because we keep growing that may constitute a veil to the illumination, the absolute truth that our soul has already experienced. But whenever we hear love, even if it's fake, I love you. It sounds good. It sounds good. I, I want to go there. I don't care. But he's lying to you. I don't care. I'm going. You all know this. She's lying to you. So I'm just I'm making two genders so I don't get in trouble with either. Because if I say he's lying to you, you know what happens to me outside. With this side. You know what? It sounds good. There's tranquility of the soul with it. Why? As if it is, it knocks on your soul and it reminds it with eternity when it was experiencing only love of Allah Ta'ala. Before this body and mind came and we started killing each other and doing all these things to each other and, you know, robbing each other. And I always say dunya is like an arena, right? It's a playground. Lots of things are in that playground. The rule is you can go into the playground and you can come out of the playground, but you can never take anything from the playground outside. There are lots of things in the playground. There's money, there's power, there's this, there's that, there is, there is, there is. Play with it, shift it from one place to another. Go ahead, enjoy yourself. But you can never take it out. 
you are required and you will come out the same way you walked in, naked. Literally naked. You notice they don't, for the kafan, for the shrouds, they don't put any pockets, right? Can't take any. They don't make them with pockets. You can't take anything with the shroud. It's just, you're going to go out of that arena just the way you came in. Now, in the arena, you're going to find lots of things. Shift them whichever way you like. From one, from south to north, some people take them, other people steal them from them, other people take them from them, other people recover them, other people. All that finding and losing and recovery is all in the arena. You can take nothing out of it. So go ahead, kill each other about it. You're going to come out and you're not going to take anything. <coughs> You know, it ain't worth it. But anyway, we're, we think because we opened our eyes to this arena, we think this arena or this playground is all there is. So the, Allah Ta'ala sends prophets. He subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us, obviously. I mean, our souls are there. And, and many people say, you know, but he created us and we suffer in life and all that. And we'll talk about that. He sent us, he commissioned some people from us to guide us to the point, to the way of love. Because he enabled our mind to make a choice. We are enabled to make a choice. Once you're enabled to make a choice, you've got two choices, good or bad. Will you always choose good? We will always choose bad as well. Just as we choose good, law of averages, you're going to choose sometimes good probabilities, right? Sometimes you're going to choose good, sometimes you're going to choose bad. That's where the angels came and said, fiha ma yufsidu fiha wa yasfiku dima. If you enable them to make a choice, they'll do two things. Fasad, corruption, and even bloodshed, not just fasad. They're going to go beyond fasad, because fasad eventually goes to bloodshed. I'm willing, you know, you're willing to do whatever. So he sent us, he commissioned messengers and prophets to take us back, to recalibrate us. Look, this is all about love, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the love of Allah ta'ala, and that you love him and you love the creation, and you walk through this arena doing what you do. Be all ambition. Um, Islam does not tell you do not be ambitious. Islam does not tell you you need to go on a mountain and, and live there. Islam does not tell you you need to be poor by the way, and, and that's contrary to a lot of people thinking. People think that being poor is better than being rich in Islam. Absolutely not. For some people, being poor is good, and for some people, being rich is good. The point is not about being poor or rich. The point is that you keep money in your pocket, not in your heart. Put it where it belongs. Keep it where it belongs. It belongs down. Keep it down. Enjoy it. Keep your heart for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah. <laughs> Don't put in your heart things that are perishable. Put in your heart the, the thing that is the only thing that is everlasting and not perishable. So he sent us messengers and commissioned prophets to tell us to go back. Look, you swerve off because of that choice, of the empowerment of choice you have. Get back in line. Get back in line. And then he sent us books of love as well. Al-Quran, Al-Kareem, Al-Tawrah, Al-Injil. Books, the, 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 the book, the Bible that was sent to Isa, Jesus, alayhi salam. The... Uh, Torah that was sent to Moses, Musa alayhi salam. Books of love. Books to try to recalibrate us to go back and sort of experience, live Jannah or turn this dimension into Jannah. I always say Allah has a Jannah in the next dimension. But if you don't enter it in this dimension, you're not going to enter into the next you you got to start living love now, not next, not tomorrow. Because if you miss out on it today, probably you're going to miss out on it tomorrow. Anyway. So that's why I say the Al-Wadud. And amongst the name of Allah Ta'ala, you know Al-Wadud. And I keep focusing on that because we forget. We call Allah Ta'ala all names that he called himself. And we forget the name Al-Wadud, which is the all-loving or the most loving, whichever you like. 
So maybe I can say the all loving sent his beloveds out of love because he's Al Wadud, sent them out of love to teach love with love, to love for love. I think that summarizes the message of Islam and the message of all the prophets entirely. The all loving sent his beloved out of love to teach love. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لا all these things ah يحب 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 حتى يحب أو لا all the أحاديث we can sit here and run throughout all the أحاديث you would not be a believer until you love for your fellow brother what you love for yourself you would not be a believer until you love your guest you would not be a believer until you love your neighbor you would not be a believer until you love this and ah the whole thing you all know so the all loving sent his beloveds out of love الودود سبحانه وتعالى to teach love, because that's what the Prophet ﷺ taught us, did not teach us to hate. They taught us to love, to love Allah Ta'ala, to love people. But they taught us love with love. <laughs> Some people, they want to teach love, but not with love, doesn't work. The way of the prophets is you teach love with love. There's no other way. Hikmati wal maw'idati al hasana, the beautiful hasana means the beautiful way, it's a way of love. Mm -hmm. To teach us love with love, to love for love. Because at the end of the day, Ya ayatuha nafsul mutmanna turjui irjui ila rabbik radiyatan mardiya. Oftentimes we ask ourselves, and a lot of, especially young people, come to me oftentimes, and you know, I'm still young myself. Age is just a number, Sheikh. You know, who's counting anyway? <laughs> La ilaha illallah. Well, in the, in the age of the universe, we're still young in that sense, or we're very, very old. Let's put it this way. All of us are then. So no one is better than the other. They come and say, does Allah love me? I don't feel that Allah loves me. I don't feel it. How do we look at Allah loving us? Am I facing troubles? Is my money gone? Power gone? Something happened that's not really making me happy? I immediately think what? If now I'm broke this month, it means Allah does not love me. I lost my job, Allah does not love me. Uh, I have money, Allah loves me. Oftentimes we really reduce Allah loves me to almost entirely, almost entirely financial gain. And I'm going to add financial, finance and power because they usually come hand in hand anyway. Have it, Allah loves me. Doesn't have it, Allah does not love me. What we don't realize obviously is that Allah Ta'ala talks talked about in Surah Al-Kahf, Rajulain. جعلنا لأحدهما جنتين من أعناب وحففناهما بنخل وجعلنا بينهما زرعة. Allah talks about two people in Surah Al-Kahf. He gave one of them jannat, meaning endless land bearing fruits and everything and trees and all that and rivers going through it. Lots of things. No, forget that. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Allah gave him the power. And Qarun, Allah gave him the money. But versus Musa and Harun, Allah did not give them the power in the sense like Pharaoh had, nor did he give them money. Miskeen Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam had to work 10 years as dowry to get married. You know, some of us are getting married easy, you know. Yeah. 10 years, remember for you? This, uh, when Allah Ta'ala talked about uh, when he went to Madian if it's Shu'ib alayhi salatu wassalam and then she came and told him look uh, my father is calling you uh, so he can reward you for your help for fetching water right remember the story and then when he went to see Shu'ib Sayyidina Musa alayhi after he exited from, uh, from Egypt 
Shu'ayb told him, uh, he gave him an offer right away. Well, the daughter told him, قالت يا أبت استأجر إن خير من استأجرت القوي الأمين. Oh father, hire him. For the best one you hire is al qawi the strong, and al amin the trustworthy. What is she telling him? Well, we want to get the man, and the man had amana. The way he treated us was with amana. There's amin. Well, I mean, a father understands what the daughter is saying. When you say to your father, hire him because he is qawi, strong, and ameen. Oh, ah, yeah, we got the we got the message. Yeah, and that's a that's 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 a perfectly right way. There's nothing wrong with that. She's outlining what not because his hair is style is this way. It's like you, that you can you know. That's why he's really cool. I mean, the Quran gives us messages, right? I don't want to go into this because then otherwise we will never finish. But I mean, these are all messages. What we should look for. Al Qawil, I mean. So Shu'ayb hears what his daughter said when she went and fetched Musa to come, alayhi salatu was salam. So Shu'ayb immediately he understood the message. He told him, In your reader, I want to marry you one of my daughters, this one. And the dowry is you work for me in the field eight years. Thamani, eight years hard work in the field. Whew. Eight years, eight years. And then he says, if you add two more, that, that's good. Down you, we make him even, ten. Eventually, Sayyidina Musa salam, worked 10 years to get married. I mean, he got married, but the contract was that you have to work 10 years. I don't know. What, why did I get here even? I don't know. <laughs> See, that's at the end of a month-long, month-and-a-half-long trip all over the world. So I'm, um, I'm actually on the uh, moon time right now. La ilaha illallah, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah. So the prophets show, they try to show us the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some people, like I said, they think that uh, yani Allah ta'ala's pleasure with you is, it means if he gave you more money, that means he's pleased with you necessarily. Now that may be the case, may not be the case. That he gave you more power necessarily, may be the case, maybe not the case. Right? Because Sulaiman alayhi salam was a king, wasn't he? Udawud was a king, and he was also wealthy, and he was also a prophet of Allah and a great man. So we have examples here, examples there. So how do I know I'm confused? If he gives me, is it good? Or if he deprives me, is good? Which, which is it? Well, to some people, giving is good, and to some people, depriving is good. Some people give them, and they'll become tyrants, highway robbers. Pharaohs of the time. And to some people deprive them, they'll be very nice. Very good. A lot of people ask, what does it mean? How do I know Allah loves me? I don't feel that Allah loves me. Well, the truth of the matter is Allah's name is Al-Wadud, so He loves you. Just by because of His name. Al-Wadud subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-loving. So you have a minimum absolute love that Allah ta'ala gives you, at least in the sense of rahmah, because rahmah is in the Arabic language, I always say it's not mercy. Oftentimes we translate rahmah as mercy, which is erroneous. Right? Because rahmah comes from rahim in the Arabic language. ra ha mim, Rahim. And rahim means the womb of the mother. That's what rahim means, right? In medical terms, uterus. I know that takes away the whole. <laughs> I know, I know. Same in Malay, rahim. So therefore, rahma doesn't mean really merciful only. It means also because the womb of the mother does not just provide mercy only. It provides love before mercy. It provides nutrition. It provides care. It provides... Uh, protection, it provides, I don't know, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. How can you just reduce it into mercy? Give me a break. And mercy has an element of pity. Like, have mercy on this, have a pity on it. Versus love does not have that element of pity. You don't pity people with love, you love them. 
So there's, we need to look at that also, and that's why the translation is wrong. I don't know what we need to do. It's a mix. You can't translate Rahim, Rahman, except maybe by saying mercifully loving, lovingly merciful. Uh, I don't know. We have to come up with something new, but whatever it is. So they say, look, I mean, how do I know Allah Ta'ala loves me? And, and, and I don't feel that Allah Ta'ala loves me. And oftentimes you're not looking because you're looking at what you do, what you want to have. And if you don't give me what I have, then you don't love me. You've seen that with kids sometimes. They tell their parents, if you don't give me what I want, then you don't love me. Really? Now, for those of you who are parents, you know that not, that's not necessarily true. Our knowledge is limited and Allah Ta'ala does not love us the way we human beings love each other because our love to each other is a love of need. Most of our love of each other is soil love, not soul love. I've been saying that for a while now. Most of our, what we say we love each other, we really love the soil in each other rather than the soul in each other, despite the soulmate business. Don't worry about that. Just put it aside. It's really more soil mate than soul mate. So we love the soil. What's in it for me? Whether it's status, whether it's wealth, whether it's feeling good, comfort, um, fulfilling certain needs. It's a love based on need. It's a need based love. That's usually our love. Not all. The refined, refined, refined are refined. But usually it takes a long time to be refined. It takes decades. Unless those are, some people are special. The love of Allah is not, not need-based love. Because He does not have needs. He doesn't need subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is need. He doesn't need anything for anything, yet everything is in need of him for everything. Otherwise, he wouldn't be the creator. His name is As-Samad. As-Samad means uh, the one who is not in need of anything for anything, yet everything is in need of him for everything. So, when he's Al-Wadud, the all-loving, he doesn't love you because of a need that he needs to love you. There's a difference here. And therefore, his love is a love from the great onto the small, the powerful onto the incapable, the limitless onto the limited. It's a different kind of love in a sense because it's not the same way we, we, we always want to talk to Allah Ta'ala or we always want to treat Allah Ta'ala the way we treat each other. And that's why oftentimes I, I mentioned that we don't forget, forgive each other. Why? Because we would not forget, forgive ourselves. Because you'd say, I would not forgive you if you do that to me. And that's why when we sin and multiply sin many times, many times, many times, we feel that we're, not, we're no longer worthy of being forgiven by Allah. Why? Because we say, I would not forgive me. I wouldn't forgive me. Why would he forgive me? Well, that's first. That's a big mistake because it's a big mistake because you're now you're likening Allah to the creation and that's a serious breach. The creator is unlike the creation. He loves you because and therefore he gave you not one chance, not two chances, not three chances, not five chances, not hundred, not thousand, not million, billions and billions. In fact, he gave you unlimited chances. So long you go back to him genuinely. Absolutely unlimited chances to make mistakes. Now should you be making mistakes? No. But did he give you unlimited, unlimited chances? Yes, he did. because he loves you. He sometimes may deprive you from things that you want, not because he doesn't love you necessarily, but because based on his knowledge, that's what's best for you. 
even if it means taking away someone you love, putting somebody else, changing things, sh you know, sh shuffling your whole world that you're, or your you know, comfort zone that you're used to. You're used to, based on what you know, not based on what he knows, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He shows you his love through your parents loving you, through those who love you when they love you. He shows you his love through when the sky rains and good things come. He shows you his love when you drink water and you, you quench your thirst. He shows you his love when you hear children's laughter in the background. He shows you his love through many, 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 many ways. But you're not looking in the right direction. Because what you want is you want one thing and one thing only, and you want to make that, that's the only standard of him really loving you. But that Allah does not work according to your calendar or your schedule. You see, even Jannah, I want to take you to in the next 10 minutes maybe or so so I don't also take too much time because I'd like to open for questions and uh, I believe speaking more uh, more than 40 some minutes well in, at the universities anyway we talk about 20 minutes and after 20 minutes we're saying that attention span goes already so it's done and I think that's that's a good thing that's a good rule of thumb but anyway because the point is not more information, the point is more reflection and contemplation. To bring it to a realization. Loading up with information is, is never really the answer. Jannah and Jahannam. The concept of hell and, fa and, 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 and paradise that Islam brings. Look at how Allah Ta'ala says, في سورة عمّة عمّة يتساءلون right سورة النبأ when he talks about جهنم hellfire Allah says جزاء وفاقا جزاء وفاقا it's in سورة النبأ you can look it up وفاقا means جزاء means air جزاء air accounting the accounting wifaqa, wifaqa means equal. You've done evil, you're gonna have a punishment that's equal to that. It means Allah does not punish you beyond that, beyond that which you've done. There's no way. Jaza'an wifaqa. So Jahannam will be based on exactly what people do and exactly then, and that's it. When he talks about Jannah, عَطَاءً حِسَابًا Just a few ayahs down. إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَازًا حَدَائِقَ وَأَعْنَابًا وَكَوَاعِبَ أَتْرَابًا وَكَأْسًا دِهَاقًا لَا يَسْمَعُونَ فِيهَا لَغْوَانَ وَلَكِذَّابًا إِلَّا يَسْمَعُونَ فِيهَا لَغْوَانَ وَلَكِذَّابًا نعم جَزَاءً مِنْ رَبِّكَ عَطَاءً حِسَابًا Jannah is not wifaqa. Not based on what you do. Ata, Allah the Quran says, Ata and Ata means what? A gift. Jahannam is wifaq. Wifaq means based on the evil deeds you commit. You do the crime, you do the time. Bottom line. Jannah is not based on the good deeds you did. He didn't say jaza and wifaqa for Jannah. He says, عَطَاءً hisaba. It's a gift. Uh, what, what do you mean it's a gift? It's a gift. Jahannam is based on the deeds that you hurt other people with. Jannah, paradise, is a gift from your Lord out of His mercy, nothing else. You don't earn it. He just gives it to you. What do you mean he doesn't earn it? You know in uh, Surah Al-Ma'raj, Allah talks about the day. In a 
a day, that day of judgment is 50,000 years. So Al-Quran talks about the relativity of time. Maybe some other time we'll talk about that, right? Because Al-Quran talks about a day being بِأَلْفِ سَنَةٍ مِمَّا تَعُدُّونَ 1,000 years. Talks about a day being day and night. Talks about a day being the day to your Lord is 50,000 years of what you count. Whatever that means, uh, we don't know. But let's just look at 50,000 years. That's one day. 50,000 years is actually one day. So let's say the Prophet ﷺ came about 1,400 years ago. Let's say 1,500 years ago. No, all right. Let's just take the Gregorian date, 2,000 years. So 2,000 years, if you live, if someone has been living for 2,000 years, you need to live 48,000 more years to be actually living, to having lived now already only one day. Okay, let's say somebody lives a hundred years. How many years you want to live a hundred? Right, this is somebody who lives a hundred years. Hundred out of fifty thousand. All right, it's gonna come to about hundred years out of fifty thousand years. That means your whole life, if you lived a hundred years out of the fifty thousand years, which equals one day, your whole life is about one point five seconds. Because every day is 84,600 seconds. So if you divide that 50,000 only, you're going to come to 84. So basically, your whole life, if you lived 100 years, if the day is 50,000 years, the day of Qiyamah, then your whole life is about 1.5 seconds. That's your whole life. Take out about one third of it sleeping. Your life is about a second, ladies and gentlemen. If you spend your whole life without eating, drinking, working, doing anything, just doing sujood, you prostrate your whole life. Your whole life is one second prostration. is worth nothing. He doesn't need your ibadah. That's why he does not need your worship. Worship is just a symbol of obedience and love. He doesn't need it. Your whole ibadah in comparison to the, 50, to the one day in Qiyamah, which is 50,000 years, it's just one second. You could be live as if you live 100 years. And if you don't do anything else, just if the waking hours is one second. And if you just do sujood your whole life, from the minute you're born till the minute you die, you're in prostration, you're doing nothing else, congratulations, you've done one second of worship. He doesn't need your worship. That's why he did not tell you, he did not obligate you with worship in Jannah. Is there worship in Jannah? Only dhikr. Only dhikr. There's no worship. Hadith fi Sahih Muslim says that the people of Jannah, there will be no obligation, but their life will be like, their breath is, subhanallah, inhalation, exhalation, alhamdulillah. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah. He said, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, they will be doing tasbih and tahmeed like you take a breath. So whatever that means, I don't know. But like you take a breath, it's a normal thing. How you take a breath, a normal thing, and you don't feel it even, people in Jannah. That's all. But there is no, they're not obligated with any worship. Why? Well, worship is not an objective. He doesn't need your worship. He's telling you, as if he's telling you, show your love and obedience. I'm going to give you Jannah. Jannah is Ata, my giving to you. Don't do hurt. Don't do bad things to other people. Don't hurt other people. Don't kill. Don't do corruption. Don't do these things. Because if you do, you're going to pay for them. Other than that, show your love and obedience. And Jannah is Ata and Hisaba. Ata, it's a give, it's a gift. You, have it. you don't earn these things. You just get them. Because your whole life is just little. And that's why when we look at our whole life, it feels like a second anyway. At least the time that has passed. I know you say, no, but you know, there is summer and winter and there is this and that. It's all like a second. You can extend that second as much as you want, but it's still a second. You can compact it in that second. And he wants us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to sort of live with that love so we can move on to the next, 
to the next dimension, which is also life. We don't, in Islam, we don't believe in death per se. Death is for the soil, not for the soul. The soil, of course, it's the vehicle that's carrying you. Well, it's created from soil, and what's, what's created from soil will have to go back to? Everything goes back to its origin. Everything goes back to its origin. The soil goes back to soil, and the soul goes back to the soul. One goes to earth, one goes to heavens, in whatever that means, in reality. And that's why he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asked us to have ta'alluq with Allah, ta'alluq attachment to Allah. You know how on a creation level, the young baby or the infant or the young child, whenever something happens, the first thing is mama, 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 right? Like, right. Anything happens, they go to mama. They're attached to their mother. Especially if their mother is nursing them and spending time with them. Everything they do is mama. They want to go back to mama. Even if their father speaks to them, they go complain to their father about their father to their mama. Anybody, mama. And when they cry, mama, right? Yeah, you all know it. That's what happens. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us an example that we can take from that that you ought to be attached to Allah Ta'ala more than the baby attached to their mother. So that you go to him for everything. I want to eat. Ya Allah, grant me food. Ya Allah, grant me rizq. Ya Allah, grant me protection. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. And you like you cry calling for your mom when you're a child. You cry calling unto Allah when you're an adult. Because guess what? Your whole age is one second anyway. You're really a child. I mean, I don't know if you're even a child. It's just one second. You're one second old. Not even one minute. He tells the, us that when the Prophet ﷺ in Hadith al-Bukhari, when he saw the woman holding that child to her after she had lost her child, and she's holding on to him so dear and tight, she would not let him go after she had lost him. And she found him, now she's breastfeeding him. And Nabi ﷺ told us that Allah is more merciful and loving unto you than this mother unto her child. Reciprocation is good, ladies and gentlemen. Allah says, Hal jaza'ul ihsan? Illa ihsan. Isn't the reward of ihsan but to do ihsan? <coughs> he has been sending you his love eternally. It's nice to look at that. Nice to look for Allah's love through everything that you see, all his mercies that he shows you throughout many things. And have appreciation. Show an attitude of gratitude. It pays. So first is having that attachment to Allah. Does Allah love me? Of course Allah loves you. Where's your attachment? He's been sending you love. What about you? Are you embracing that love and then channeling it on? Are you reciprocating that love? Or are you, are you just totally turning yourself off? And it's important to be attached to Allah Ta'ala. This second, I know it sounds long. Sometimes it's 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years. But it's still a second. Life is gone. If a day is worth 50,000 years from what we count, then a hundred years is a second and a half. Take out the, when you're a baby and when you sleep, you have a second. This is, this is life, that's it. Call on to him. Look for him in these signs that he throws at you, all over you, all around you. A good company, a good laughter, people who point you to our, towards Allah Ta'ala. Uh, times of happiness, times, these are all messages from Him, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, to you. The second thing, the hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us, that Allah said, the hadith is Sahih Al-Bukhari, where 
Allah Ta'ala is telling us, Ana inda dhanni abdi bi, I am what my slave holds of me. Why do people not forgive the, themselves or don't forgive others? Because they say, God would not forgive me. That's what they hold of Allah Ta'ala. And guess what? That's how they will react and that's how they will be. And Allah tells us in this hadith, which means I am what my slave holds of me. You hold of him, he's not going to forgive you? Okay? You be the judge then. You hold that he will. He is all forgiving. Al-Ghafoor, Al-Ghaffar, Ghafir al dhamb You will be forgiven. It's that good thinking about him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not delusional. Not means that you actually plan to sin and you just give him lip service that I would like to be forgiven. No, no. The lip service doesn't work with Allah Ta'ala. Genuine. Genuine. Will we make mistakes? Of course. Will we all sin? Absolutely. We're human beings. We're going to sin. We're going to make mistakes. Just make sure you don't do grave things. The others, repent for them. Say, Ya Allah, I want to come back to you. And he will forgive you. Genuinely, I just want to come back to you. I know I was wrong. I want to come back. And you need, if you, you have to repeat that million times a day, then you do. And you will always be admitted. That's just how it is. Limitless. What if I keep doing it all the time? So long you go back genuinely, you'll be accepted. Million times? M billion times. But I would not forgive me if I did it a billion times to me. Well, you are not God. I am what my slaves hold, a slave holds of me. And then the hadith goes to say, which is a metaphorical statement entirely. If he or she obviously in that, if they come close to me, a span, a hand span length, I will come closer to them an arm span length. If they come to me walking, I'll come to them running. What you're seeking is seeking you. If you're seeking. And then Allah Ta'ala tells us another hadith. So first is attachment to him and the act of being closer to him. Because the question is never whether Allah is close to you. The question is, are you close to him? Allah is close to you. That's a definition. That's a fact. It's in the Quran. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ It's already there. That's a given. The question is not, is Allah close to me? He's closer to you than you are to yourself. The question is, are you close to him? Then how? Well, as he tells you, uh, start with the thinking, I am what my slave holds of me. Think good of Allah Ta'ala. Think good of Allah Ta'ala. Number one. Number two, start now going towards him. If he comes to me in a hand span length, I'll come closer to him in arm span. If he comes walking, I'll come running. In a metaphorical way, Allah is not attributable with all that business. But in a metaphorical way, means if you think you're close, you're coming close, he's much closer to you then. That's why one of the pious people in the old days, they asked him, how do you know that Allah loves you? Or how do you know that Allah, you are remembered by Allah Ta'ala? And that meaning, that, that special meaning. He says, I know because if I mention him, he mentions me. In that meaning. فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ if you are my remembers, you remembered. Simple as that. And then the last obviously stage on that path to Allah Ta'ala is what also Al-Bukhari mentions, Sahih, Hadith, you all know it. وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ And my creation, my slave, will keep doing extra things, extra good things. You will go out of your way to do good. Until I love him, the hadith says. So you're doing things, but now you start, you want to acquire more love. And now you try to get closer to him. You smile, you forgive, you give. Forgive and give, both. You contribute back. You do good things, you improve yourself, you refine yourself, you try to be a positive change to others and with others. 
and all while observing Allah Ta'ala, meaning all while you know you are He's watching you, while you know you are with Him, you're living with Him, you're breathing with Him, you are worshiping with Him, He's never absent from you. And if you are absent from Him, you return back to His presence. So you do good, 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 you keep doing this. Allah says in the hadith here, which means, until I love him. Now this person becomes not just loved in the normal way, loved in a sense so that the Allah Ta'ala says, then kuntu kuntu basarahu Then he sees with me. In a metaphorical way, obviously. He hears with me and he walks with me and he touches with me and he He sees that which Allah Ta'ala is pleasing to Allah only. He, he's already Rabbani. He hears that which is pleasing to Allah Ta'ala only. He's already Rabbani. The filtration is already there. It's almost like f naturally flowing. He walks to that which Allah, which is pleasing to Allah, does not walk to that which is not. He touches that which is pleasing to Allah Ta'ala, does not touch that which is not. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْطِيَنَّهُ Allah says, which means, and if he asks me for anything, or if she asks me for anything, I will grant them. وَلَئِنْ إِسْتَعَاذَنِي لَأُعِيذَنَّهُ And if they seek refuge in me, I will give them. I think let me stop here, and because that kind of talk takes a long time, and I think it's important to keep some sanity in the, in the room. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله والحمد لله رب العالمين